Good morning, and welcome to worship at St. Bartholomew's on the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost. Let us prepare ourselves for worship. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say together the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. 
You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son came into the world that he might destroy the works of the devil and make us children of God and heirs of eternal life. Grant that having this hope, we may purify ourselves as he is pure, that when he comes again with power and great glory, he may, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Amos. Thus says the Lord, the God of hosts, the Lord, Alas for you who desire the day of the Lord. Why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light, as if someone fled from a lion and was met by a bear or went into the house and rested a hand against the wall and was bitten by a snake. Is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them, and the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals, I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps. But let justice roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. The word of the Lord. The psalm today is Psalm 70 and will be read in unison. It may be found on page 682 of the Book of Common Prayer or in your PDF. Be pleased, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those who seek my life be ashamed and altogether dismayed. Let those who take pleasure in my misfortune draw back and be disgraced. Let those who say to me, aha, and gloat over me turn back because they are ashamed. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say forever, great is the Lord. But as for me, I am poor and needy. Come to me speedily, O God. You are my helper and my deliverer. O Lord, do not tarry. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Love of pleasure, lost of 
of gold from sin which make the heart grow cold. Wean us and train us with thy rod. Teach us to Sins of heedless word and deed, for pride ambitious to succeed, for crafty trade and subtle snare to catch the simple unaware, for lives be. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I'm sure I don't have to tell anyone after this week that we are living in chaotic times. Regardless of how you feel about the outcomes of the local and state and national elections, their drawn-out nature, I imagine, has left most of us feeling pretty unsettled. There's a palpable feeling of anxiety in our culture. In today's Gospel reading, Jesus says, Do not let your anxiety distract you from what is really important. 
He wants us to know that whatever is going on in the world or in our lives, we need to stay focused on seeking God's kingdom. Things may feel like they are out of control in our lives because the truth is things are never fully in our control. Our job is to wait on the Lord and to be faithful by loving God with all our hearts, minds, and souls, and loving our neighbors as ourselves. From our gospel reading for today, keep awake therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Jesus is talking in that statement at the end of the, the reading about the time when he will return at the time of the the end of time and he tells a story a story about bridesmaids waiting for the bridegroom the bridegroom is obviously jesus himself and jesus says that we should be like wise bridesmaids who were prepared for when the bridegroom would come would come back and we should not be like foolish bridesmaids who are not prepared. The wise bridesmaids are prepared because they have enough oil for their lamps. And so they can go out and meet the bridegroom when he comes and have enough light for their lamps. But the foolish bridesmaids do not bring enough oil. And they beg the wise bridesmaids for some of their oil. But the wise bridesmaids say, no, they cannot give, they don't have enough for themselves and to give some to the others. So the others have to go out and buy more oil. And while they are out, the bridegroom returns. And so it's only the wise bridesmaids who are able to meet him. Jesus is, as I said, talking about the end of time time when he will come back. We can imagine the disciples asking Jesus after he tells them this story, when will this be? We can hear the nervousness in their question as they ask Jesus about when these end times will happen. The disciples were living in chaotic times for sure. And it was a constant reality of the people who lived in ancient Israel at this time. Their country was, at that time, occupied by the Romans, and there were always tensions between Israelites and their foreign occupiers. Israel had been occupied for a long time, for several hundred years. Before the Romans, it was the Greeks. And sometimes the oppression was so severe that groups of Israelites rose up against their occupiers to try and throw them off. So although we may feel like our, this last week has been chaotic for us and uh, our times are nothing compared to the types of chaos that people lived in regularly for, for several hundred years before the time of Christ and his disciples. There have been uprisings and occupations often, off and on throughout that time. And most of them usually were put down pretty brutally. There was one uh, that's recorded in the book of First Maccabees that was successful. It was about 200 years before Christ. And during that time, there was great persecution of the people of, of Israel by the emperor Antiochus IV Epiphanes. And he had ordered that a, uh, um, the, the, the altar in Jerusalem, uh, that a, a sacrifice be made there to the Greek gods. You can imagine how this would have been uh, so intolerable to the people of Israel at that time. And so the people rise up in what's called the Maccabean Revolt, uh, led by um, 
uh, a man uh, whose name was, was Maccabee. And he was sort of a, if you know the, the movie Braveheart, he was a bit like William Wallace in that movie going up against the, this huge um, army and nation with uh, a, a ragtag group of, uh, of people and is miraculously successful. It's this event of the Maccabean Revolt, a couple of hundred years before Christ, that will be remembered by um, Jewish people next month in the festival of Hanukkah. But there are tons of these sorts of revolts that, that happen, and, and the Maccabean Revolt was one unusual one in which they were successful, and for a short time Israel was independent but then the Romans come and they occupy Israel and it's a very similar situation to the Greek occupation. Uh, the oppression is, is very high. So we fast forward 200 years and at this time, it's the time of the early church. We're 10 years or so beyond today's gospel reading. Jesus has been crucified and resurrected and the, the church is just getting started <clears throat> after about uh, 10 years since Jesus' resurrection. Now the Roman emperor is a man named Caligula, and he himself orders, again, um, a sacrilege into the Jewish temple. This time it's not a sacrifice of a pig and to the Greek gods, as it had been 200 years earlier, this time it's a statue he's ordering of himself to be erected on the high altar in Jerusalem. Caligula will, will, will die. He will actually be assassinated before that statue can be erected, but the offense was already created. The desecration of the temple, again, is going to galvanize people to unrest and to chaos. And in 70 AD, it will finally blow up into a full-blown uprising. So imagine during these chaotic times, Matthew is writing his gospel, and he's remembering this story that Jesus had told his followers. And Matthew remembers Jesus as he tells this story, and he writes it down, and it must have, the people who originally heard it, Matthew's gospel must have felt at this time when things were so out of control. They must have heard this story and, and heard that Jesus was calling them to recognize that Christ is greater than anything that the world can bring. No matter how out of control and how chaotic life may feel. In this reading, we see that the, the Christ is coming back. And so we are called not to, to make everything right. Christ is coming back. Our job is to be faithful, to focus on following him, to strive to prepare the way for his reign on earth as it is in heaven, to seek first the kingdom and its righteousness. After Christ had come and, and lived uh, with us and to save us and even going so far as to die and be raised for us, for our salvation, Christians began to understand that their lives were no longer just simply buffeted by outside events that they could, were, out, were, were beyond their control. Now they understood that we as Christians are living in in-between times, meaning that we are living in the time between when Jesus came the first time and when Jesus is coming again and his kingdom is fully established. Y'all, that changes everything. We know that we are part of God's plan even if we do not understand why everything happens the way that it does. We know and are encouraged that we already have the end of the story which is the victory of the resurrected Christ's return. That is good news for us this morning in what may feel like a chaotic week. 
that no matter how anxious and chaotic times may seem, we can rest secure in the truth that we are in the in-between time, preparing the way and waiting for Christ's return. No matter if events in the world are joyous to us or deeply disappointing, our job remains the same to be like the wise bridesmaids who are prepared. We do that by preparing the way for Christ's coming, seeking first his kingdom and its righteousness, and not letting ourselves get distracted and anxious by things that are beyond our control. One thing that is in our control, living faithfully as if Christ is coming back today. That is all that is necessary for today. Amen. Let us affirm our faith, saying together the Nicene Creed, found on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer, or in your bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are form three, found on page 387 of the Book of Common Prayer, or your bulletin. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest, 
Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor using the form found on page 359 in the Book of Common Prayer or your bulletin. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, we give thanks for your peaceful presence in our lives as you, and ask you to be present in our hearts as we share your peace with those around us. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you.
Our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer A, found on page 361 in the Book of Common Prayer, or in your bulletin. And as we continue, we remember that whether we are receiving it in person, physically, at church, or whether we are receiving it spiritually at home, we are all receiving communion together. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin, and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. 
Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us continue with the post-communion prayer found in your bulletin. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. God, our creator and healer, may the boldness of your spirit transform us. May the gentleness of your spirit lead us. May the gifts of your spirit be our goal and our strength now and always. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Crown him, ye mortals.